Yo, what up, your partner, big boy? Yes. Uh, where do I begin with the uh, the big three? Kendrick, Drake, Cole, where are they now? And when I say Kendrick, Drake, Cole, where are they now? I don't mean like, oh, we don't know where they are. It's, you know, it's not like anyone has fallen off or anything. But when I say where are they now, as far as this so-called the beef, the battles that's going down, where are they now? Now, we've had a chance to really kind of digest what's been going on the last, what, couple weeks, I would say, last couple, last few weeks. When I was over at Rolling Loud, and I remember Travis Scott was on stage with Future and Metro Boomin, and he kept calling for this song, and he didn't say the title of it. He just kept saying that, man, play that song, and he just kept saying it over and over and over, right? So as a spectator in the crowd, I want to hear this song that Travis Scott keeps telling, you know, Metro Boom and the Future to press play on. So when he hits the song, I hear, of course, you know, I hear Future, I hear Metro Boomin, but not knowing that this is the song like that that had the Kendrick Lamar verse on it. They never played the verse when it came to us listening to it at Rolling Loud. But once the album came out, the We Don't Trust You album, and we did get a chance to hear like that, that was the song where Kendrick came and a lot of people say, man, you know, he went at, you know, mother F the big three. They're, they're the big three. And Kendrick had some things on his mind. And, you know, at one point it felt like, damn, where did, where did this come from? You know, and you've always heard friendly competition. You always heard, you know, that uh, rap is a sport, you know, you got to stay on your toes, those kind of things. And, You've also heard where, you know, Kendrick has said, you know, has there been some sneak dissing? You know, it's it's a competitive thing, that this thing that we call hip-hop. But that one, when it came to like that, that felt like, man, it felt like it was a quiet field and Kendrick just took a grenade and tossed it and blew this hip-hop game right off of, you know, off course. It's, and I don't mean off course like in a bad way, but I wasn't ready for anything like that. When we were talking about future Metro Boomin' album, we were speaking about, oh, man, it's just going to be good music. We can't wait to see them over at Rolling Loud. Not knowing that this was going to house one of the biggest so-called diss songs or start a beef. And it's easy to say, oh, this year, because we're still fresh into 2024. But I can say in a long time. And when we heard that, of course, your mind starts to go with, okay, we've heard Kendrick. And there were so many, you know, People talking about it. It was all over social media. People were doing their videos, you know, reaction videos. But the main question was, are they going to come back? Are we going to hear something from J. Cole? Are we going to hear something from Drake? Now, when we say the big three, Kendrick, J Drake, and Cole, where are they now? Where are they now when it comes to this thing called hip hop? We've heard from Cole. We have yet at this moment while I'm sitting down doing this uncut, we haven't heard anything from Drake. And I don't mean when I say anything, I don't just mean, oh, we haven't heard a song. We haven't heard, you know, a rebuttal. We haven't heard a reply. I just haven't heard Drake really address it. And Drake, sometimes, you know, there's things where Drake can say, you know what, I'll put my energy into that. We've heard some, some verses before. But then there's times where Drake is just like, ah, I'm not going to get into it. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, the public is asking what's going on when it comes to the big three and Kendrick, Drake, and Cole, where are they now? And I'm wondering pretty much where are they now? And when I say where are they now, not that anyone has disappeared, but where is Kendrick? Is Kendrick in a position where he's going to come for J. Cole again and bypass the apology? Is Kendrick waiting on Drake to say something so Kendrick has something in the chamber. Where are they now when it comes to the big three? Is Drake, is he in a position right now where he's going to say something or is Drake going to ignore it? Each one of these guys, when we say the big three, they all have a mighty and a beautiful fan base. And I don't think any one of them have to do something just to be shocking or any one of them need to to call out. And we've heard this. We, we, we've we heard this as seven, seven minute drill from, from Cole that, you know, paraphrasing, but this is, you know, you, 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 you kind of speaking out, you, you know, you, you, you're trying to make some noise. So when we say, where are they now? Where is this so-called beef 
that's happening and this battle that's happening with Kendrick, Drake, and Cole. You get a lot of people that say when you get this kind of shakeup that people say it's good for hip-hop. And I've seen so many people online that say, oh, you know, hip-hop is a sport. And, of course, you know, I've been in hip-hop, you know, my entire life I've been in hip-hop. I'm a child of hip-hop. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, you know, not now, but my skills, ugh, whatever. But I started off DJing and rapping and I, and I fell in love. And, and, and it's hard to say since Vince Staples say you don't fall in love. And, you know, people say, oh, when did you fall in love with hip hop? And, and that was a question I would ask until I saw Vince Staples. And we talked about it on air, but I saw him in an interview where he was like, it's always been there. It's like, th that's like somebody asking you, when did you fall in love with your mom? You know, your mom's been there. So I've been in love with hip hop my entire life. You know, when I when I got an introduction to hip hop, I never let hip hop go. And I've seen some of the best battles. And I understand that hip hop is a competition and hip hop is a sport. I understand when people say those things. I've been through, and in no particular order, I, I've seen the LL Cool J versus Cool Mo D. I seen Bad Boy and 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 Death Row get into their situation. Nas versus Jay Z, N.W.A. Cube uh, that with no Vaseline and a hundred miles and running. Of course, Fifty Cent, Jay Z. We've seen these battles before. Game and Fifty, Jeezy and Young and and uh, and, and Gucci Mane. We've seen these battles before. And then you also seen battles where it was like when I saw the East Coast West Coast beef, that was a so-called beef that really changed the what, what the course hip-hop felt like. When you had LL Cool J and, and Kumo D go at it, it was lyrically. When you had, in the worst-case scenarios, Ice Cube do a No Vaseline, it was lyrically. Then when we fast-forward, you know, to Pac and Biggie, we lost both of those soldiers. We had a split when it came to, you know, coastal situations. And, and even now, you know, there's so many... Not even battles. There's just so many disses when it comes to hip hop that it's even hard to keep track of what's going on now because people say, "Oh man, did you hear such and such say something? Did you hear Polo G say something? Did you hear this?" You know, and you hear and you hear those kind of things. But I understand when people say that it's a sport and they feel like J Cole has to come back. You know, oh he got to come back. He got to come back. And when Cole came back. Everybody felt like, okay, this is it. Some people thought it was lukewarm. Some people thought that, you know, oh, he destroyed Kendrick. Some people thought that it wasn't the, the, the reply that they thought they were going to get. But when it came to hearing 7-Minute Drill, when he first dropped Mike Delete, Mike Delete Later, I went straight to 7-Minute Drill. And that's that thing that we talk about, you know, sometimes we, we love looking over at the accident. We love looking over at what's going down. But I went straight to 7-Minute Drill. And I listened to it, and we listened to it for days, and then Dreamville Fest came. And when Dreamville Fest came, we were sitting in here as the neighborhood, and we were talking about, do you think he's going to perform? We even watched the last few uh, Drake shows. You know what I'm saying? Is Drake going to say anything? And Drake is good when it comes to saying certain things because you figure, like, man, is Drake saying, is he addressing this, or is he not? But with Cole, we knew that he was addressing like that. We knew that seven minute drill was directed at Kendrick Lamar. When we got to Dreamville and watching that as a live stream, because I didn't attend it live in person. So I watched the stream and you were waiting to see if he was going to say anything or if he was going to even perform it. And from that, we got the apology. And I felt like it was a great project. And J. Cole said the same thing. When it came to the apology, he loved the entire project, but. So I'm so proud of that project, except for one part. Mm. It's one part of that shit that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in mm. my fucking life, right? Mm. And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, no, nah, I don't do that. But I got to keep it 100 with y'all. Yeah, man. And so when he say... I got to keep it 100, and, I, and I, I love the entire project except one part. And that one part, of course, is seven-minute drill. Y'all heard some shit that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? Yeah, see, and he even recognized what it was because the same way we were shocked about like that, 
I'm pretty sure. I don't know if, if Cole got a heads up that something was coming. And even when I was speaking about Travis Scott, I text Travis and I was like, Travis, I said, man, I said that record that you was calling for. I didn't know that that record was going to be like that. And Travis, you know, he didn't know it was going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Because there is different variations of the actual record. And when you heard the actual record, even with Rodney O, Rodney O and Joe Cooley, who everlasting bass, who that who 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 had to clear the sample for Metro Boomin, I saw him and he was talking about how he didn't know that Kendrick did that verse and that verse was going to shake up not just hip hop, that it was just going to be something that shook up the world. He didn't know. So when Travis was calling out for it, and a very other a very close close source as well. When Travis was calling out for it, he wasn't calling out for that record. Like, man, play that Kendrick Lamar diss to Drake and J. Cole because, respectfully, he hadn't heard the verse. He hadn't heard the verse the same way with Joe Cooley. Joe Cooley hadn't heard the verse. So with that, I didn't know that it was coming, and that's why I say I wonder if Cole knew that it was coming. So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because mm -hmm. I got the world and I got my niggas like, what you going to do, Cole? Yeah. Everybody was saying what you going to do. My niggas like, Bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh, my fucking God. Mm -hmm. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's wartime. Boom, 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 right? And that's what people want to see. It's wartime. Like, man, you you was minding your own and Kendrick came from nowhere. What are we going to do about this? And that's the peer pressure of the game, too. And that's also standing solid on your ten toes as well, where you're like, man, this man is trying to disrupt my world. This man is trying to upset my peace. This man got the whole world looking at me a certain way for a battle I didn't even know that I was in. You know what I'm saying? Some people was calling J. Cole, and this is a this is a big thing, but a casualty of war. They were feeling like it was more uh, Kendrick should have been going after Drake, but the big three J. Cole was also mentioned in there. So maybe he was a casualty of war. Not my saying what I heard from other people. So now you do have people that surround you, not just us that love the genre, not just us that love the big three when it comes to Kendrick, Drake, and Cole, not just us as a fan base, but you also got your friends and family. I know if someone came at me, I would definitely get a call from my brother Mouse that'll say, hey, man, what are we going to do about this? You know? And you go in and, and you do cut a record, but you got to think, what am I going to do about this? Niggas want to see blood. And, and I was mm. conflicted because, one, I know my heart, you know what I mean? And, like, I know how I feel about my peers, these two niggas that i just been mm. blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way. But the world want to see blood. Yeah, the world want to see blood. And that's what people were talking about, man, that hip-hop was built on this. Hip-hop was built on battles. Hip-hop is, you know, this is a sport. Is hip-hop a sport? Is battle rap a sport? I remember I was looking at D1, and D1 is is a rapper that's trying to change the the, the course of what, what, what the genre feels like, you know, accountability, things like that. And he was going in saying that hip-hop is not a sport. You know, it's not a sport. So when I saw J. Cole with the apology, I talked to one of my guys, and I won't call him by name, but he was like, oh, man, that's soft. Oh, that's, you know... He, the the for one his, his 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 reply was soft you know but he he's he's all west coast too you know what i'm saying and not that it, this isn't a coastal thing because it's not just west coast people that's rocking with k dot you know what i'm saying because we rock with them all but my guy was pretty much saying that man why did he apologize why did why did he apologize he should have said it in the first place but that's what life is man we are contradictive in life you know what I'm saying? So when at one moment I could feel a certain way, I could feel like I want to do it. I could feel that y'all want me to do it. I could feel that I have to do it. And then when I do it, maybe it doesn't sit right with my spirit. And I think that's where J. Cole was at. In my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was, that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like, 
jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my fucking peace. Hey man, when he said that, it doesn't sit right with my spirit and it disrupts my fucking peace. That's when I was like, I understand where he's coming from. Because in this clip also, I think you hear him say that he didn't realize how good he had been sleeping for the last 10 years. Because when your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul, when it's at peace, you do kind of walk in a different way. And he felt like coming with seven-minute drill, it disrupted his, his calm his spirit, you know, and, and that's a lot. That's bigger than we want to see it. That's bigger than do it for the genre. That's bigger than, oh, it's a sport. It's bigger than you got to come back. It's bigger than the peer pressure because it messed with you. It messed with your temple. And that's what J. Cole was speaking about. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and in and, and that shit, mm -hmm. trying to find a little angle, and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. Mm. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? Mm -hmm. Hey, man, that's what I told him. Everybody, get out. No, <laughs> get out of Dreamville. But but the, that show you how much you share a fan base. And even with Ani that worked with us, man, Ani's a, uh, she's a cold fan. Yeah. And she felt a certain way about... That, like, dang, why did, why did Kendrick do that? And, and and I don't feel like you have to pick a side. You got to choose, you know. That's why you had so many people at Dreamville at the festival that came to Dreamville that is a J. Cole festival that's centered around J. Cole, that's centered around Home Plate, the the, the hometown hero. But when he said, are there any, like, Kendrick or Lamar fans here, you heard the crowd share their love about Kendrick Lamar as well. Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? Yes, sir. As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the mm. lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it make, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm going to take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. Hey, man, so I think that with, with Cole, I think that this whole thing that's going on right now, I think Cole is done with it. Yep. Yeah, I think I think Cole I think Cole is done with it, man. And there's no one that should be able to force him back into it. You know, when you say that it, it disrupts your peace, that's a whole different feeling. That's a whole different vibe that none of us can sit and we can question, you know, why he's not coming back. We know that Cole is a fucking lyricist. We know that. We know that Cole is built for the game. We know that. It's just that he felt that it was not just not oh, it was corny. It just didn't sit right with his spirit and it disrupt his peace. Those are the things that you don't sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? It take a long time to get there and to recognize that you're there. And you got to think when he said he was not moving right 10 years ago. Then you start putting in all these deposits. You put in these deposits of spirituality. You put in these deposits of positivity, growing yourself, looking out for your family, becoming the best human being that you could be. And then he probably felt like with seven-minute drill, all those fucking great deposits I put in, look at this fucking withdrawal. And I feel like to his spirit that he felt that that was a withdrawal. And... It take a lot, and I, I I don't read a lot of comments, but it take a lot for people to sit and say, you know, ah, oh, why did why did he do it? Why did why did he? You know, and, and it take a lot to to hear people comment about you, and hopefully he turned that silence off because that silence is is it's not good for him. You know, you got to do for you first before you could do for anybody that's in your family. That you know, and that's that's hard to come to as well your surroundings, and as it grows out, you know, even your fan base, you got to think about yourself first. So if, if you're not sitting down and you're not and you're not J. Cole, 
and it doesn't feel good to you, then you can't understand where this man is coming from. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. The past two days felt terrible. Mm. Like, it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. So all of that to say, man, I wanna, I wanna now perform mm. the song that's a reminder to me of getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God. And the name of the song is called Love Yours. I wanna do that for y'all right now. Amen. And you know what's wild about that as well, man, is that when you look at the original title to the project, what did Mike Delete Later mean? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what did it mean? And not that it was like, oh, he went in and he was like, oh, I want to put this out and then I'm going to apologize. And I don't, I don't feel like J. Cole is $3 bill like that. I don't feel like J. Cole is, is a fake individual like that. But Mike Delete Later. And I don't know where it's at on streaming services. If y'all can look it up and see if it's still available mm -hmm. right now, even as a stream through Apple or however you get how you consume your still music, there. it's still there. Yep. So, but when you heard Mike delete later, you're like, man, maybe, maybe when he put it out, maybe it didn't feel good to him. You have you ever done something that you knew wasn't right? You knew it wasn't for you, mm -hmm. but you did it anyway. And then after you do it, then you're like, ah, shit, fuck. Something told me not to do that. I think that that's where he was at. You know, now when it comes to Drake, we have yet to hear from Drake. You know, so when we say, where are they now? Where is Drake at on this? You know what I'm saying? Drake has been in competitions. And like I say, none of these dudes are lacking when it comes to lyricism. You know, Drake hasn't said anything. The public is wanting Drake to say something. But you got to think, Drake lets some shit pass off of him. And Drake will also go in on certain things. Like, Drake didn't tuck his tail when it came to that Meek Mill shit. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Drake was there for, for all things Meek Mill. And they went at it. You know what I'm saying? Then there's other times where Drake's just like, oh, because we heard the control verse. Oh, my God. And the control verse... People are comparing control verse, you know what I'm saying, to what this, like that felt like. Yeah. It was like, man, I thought we was cool. And then, damn, you came in and, and sh shook this up on me. That's what people felt like. This one with like that almost felt like the control verse. And I remember Drake, he sat down with Angie Martinez and she was talking about the sport of hip hop. And Angie is, you know, the voice of New York and she's a queen. She's in the game for decades, you know, decades as well. But she did talk to Drake about, after the control verse, what's going to happen now. You should get into a rap battle. See? Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I think that would be great. I feel like that's just... I, think I feel like those things are of the moment. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, but you are... You're qualified. Yeah, no, I'm. You know oh no, I like you, I'd hold it down. You'd be enjoyable. Yeah, but I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm a. I. I do like. I really do this. Like as far as writing goes, and it would have to be warranted because my. It would get. It would be scathing. The bars would be scathing. I can't. Yeah. Just do See, he said the bars would be scathing. When you say the bars would be scathing, that's one of those things where you say when I say it, and when I do it, we probably may not be able to come back from this. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I can't say something or you say something about me, then I come back. And when I say it, it's scathing. That means I'm really going at you. And we've seen it before. We've seen Jay-Z and Nas go at it. And, you know, I spit on your baby and your mom and this in the car. You know, we've seen some things. We've seen them recover from that. Mm -hmm. We've seen um, Ice Cube uh, with no Vaseline. And he each verse, which is one of the the best diss songs to me ever. Each verse, members from NWA got that. And now we've seen them, you know, put movies together, get stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but it took some time and they got there, you know? But what Drake is talking about also, man, that is when I, if or when I do it, I'm not going to play with it. Without it, I can't be the first one. You know, I'm always... You, know, you wouldn't do it for sport? Ever? Sport. Like just to call someone out? Like, no, like a, like after Kendrick's thing. You wouldn't, mm -hmm. I, I noticed you didn't really get into that too much. So I just like, I don't know. It, it just wasn't real to me. It's And see, that's control. That's years ago mm -hmm. where he said, you know what? It just wasn't real to me. She, and she said, Angie Martinez said, you didn't get into it. And at the moment, as we sit here and do this uncut, it's the same thing years later. At the moment, Drake just hasn't gotten into it. Like, 
I, I saw him after that, and it was just like love. So it's like, was that real or was that just this like about for the control? People, you know what no, I mean? I like, think it's a sparring kind of sport. Yeah, but you know, at the that. same time, it's like you know, then let it be real. Then you know, I mean, because those were harsh words, mm-hmm. right? So it's like. Don't just you can't just say that and then see me and be like, yeah, man, what's up? Pretending like nothing ever happened. Like, mm-hmm. That's not real. That's not to me. That's not like so the nature of battling. I mean, there's passion behind it. There's anger behind it, you know, mm-hmm. and I personally enjoy making like great music and bodies of work over like being the talk of Twitter for like five days, you know. Over, but you like, seem just now a little irritated by it. No. Really? Yeah, just by even saying that it was those harsh words, it seemed like maybe it irritated you for a Angie's second. good. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Angie's good. For a second, is that wrong? No, it's just like I mean, it, come like coming from that situation, I it was unexpected. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't like it, it's sort of like um, in working your way up and sort of building relationships. I I wouldn't expect you to like throw all the relationships out the door for the sake of like I said being like the talk of the internet for right. like 10 days and then you know it's like now this like everyone's gonna forget it but I mean it, people don't even care about it anymore so but, true. but now especially this week it's like yeah okay moving on like it, I don't know if it was worth it you know because there's a lot of people that were mentioned that I feel like won't get, can't really go back and fuck with that guy after right. that you know what I'm saying sorry I shouldn't have cussed no me. it's okay I enjoy but, it get, it, get into yeah. it Drake go go but no that's the, people but, think you're too nice that's the problem <laughs> you, gotta look, you gotta curse a little bit nah more. but anyway I mean for, <laughs> For me, you know, it was cool. I, I feel like the 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 verse was great, and and um, I, I, would, I understand what as a fan, to do. I would enjoy a Drake and Kendrick kind of sparring oh, yeah. session. Well, I'm sure yeah. you would. Yeah, I would. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Do you want me to lie to you about this? No, that's good. That's it's good. Just, I, I I understand it. I understand it. I've been. I, I I never. I never thought Kendrick, but there's a couple other right. people I thought would have called my name by now that I never did. But oh, is that what you're waiting for? The name call. I'm waiting for it. I'm ready for Ooh. it. Not waiting for mm. it, but I'm ready for it. And see, you know what's crazy about it is I don't mind seeing it. I don't mind seeing it. I don't mind hearing it. Like, yeah, did I listen to like that? Hell yeah, I listened to like that. Did I enjoy it? Hell yeah, I enjoyed it. Did I listen to 7-Minute Drill? Hell yeah, I listened to 7-Minute Drill. Did I enjoy it? Yes. But when one person say, I'm done, I got to respect that. Mm -hmm. And especially if you come, he didn't say, I can't hang with this dude. Kendrick is just too much for me or I'm not going to even indulge in that kitty stuff. He said the way I feel, the way I feel, the way that it messed with my peace, I'm done. So not I'm done, but it just didn't feel right. You know, so I would figure from that when I say done, I figure that that he's done. You know what I'm saying? But it's always been competition and I understand that. No one is truly my peer or can relate to what I'm going through in Jay life Cole. more than these people right here, you know what I mean? Because just in terms of whatever pressures there might be, whatever amount of like celebrity, which is, you know, a whole conversation in the sub there might be, family, you know, privacy, boom, boom, boom. It's like nobody can really relate to that like these dudes. And I really genuinely fuck with these dudes. So like mm-hmm. I've been trying to, you know, absolutely make an effort like as time goes on to like strip the competition from it. Mm-hmm. Like y'all niggas are submitted forever. And that's years ago right there. You know, you know what I mean? Like, I will hope that I'm submitted forever. And if not, I will be, you know, when it's all said and done. In my mind, it's how my mentality is. So it's like, there's, like, the competition part I've stripped away. And I'm now on some shit like, man, I'm more interested in the relationship. Because I also see a time when I'm not doing this. That seems very realistic to me. And in a time mm-hmm. when I'm not doing this, you know, I don't want to be like, damn, I never fucked. I, we never kicked it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, man. And I was looking at comments of people like, oh, that's grown man, you know. That's grown man kind of stuff, you know, and the same people that, you know, not the same people, but in this, under the same comment, you'll see, you know, that sucker shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That sucker shit as well. K. K. Dot Kendrick. Yeah. Did you know when you went this in and we, we had we a had... chance to speak to with Kendrick, man? I think we we're talking about the control verse here. Yeah. yeah, here we go. Yeah. Did you know when you went in? And we we ask you this and you've been asked, but did you know when you went in just to do that verse? Honestly. That, that it would take and it would have this kind of impact no. on music? No. I didn't know until after... You know, you see the 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 hooray and hoorah about it. The fact that hip hop hasn't been uh, shaking shake up, up in a long end. time. Mm-hmm. You know, when I went in and did the verse, I thought I was just having fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and, and you know, these cats I know, and I'm you know calling out that we having fun. We, right, right. We, these we are my comrades. Yeah. So, but I see how the world took it and flipped the media. You know, I realized okay, it has been ten, yeah. fifteen years before. You know, it's been some type of shaking Man. up in the game. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
We'll continue to watch the yeah. sport. We'll continue to see what's going on with this sport. You know, the friendly competition, but it's always good to to see the game get shaken up a little bit. And definitely. as long as it's peaceful, then I am definitely here mm -hmm. all day for it. But once when one says he's done spiritually, then he's done. And Ani had handed this to me. This is off of Drake's uh, message board on tour. Said the rap game would never be at peace. There will always be competition. And as long as there's competition, there will never be peace. Everyone wants to be the one. Mm -hmm. And that's it. All righty. Thank you guys, man, for being uncut with us up in here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Kendrick. Love you, bro. Drake, love you. Cole, love you. This is Uncut Kendrick, Drake, Cole, the big three. Where are they now? Thank you guys for hanging out with us, Big Boys Neighborhood. <laughs>